Hey guys, it's Dr. Childs here, and today I want to talk to you about radioactive iodine treatment, and basically I want to talk to you about what you should expect if you're going to get this treatment. So let's jump right in. I have six topics that I want to go over um, to basically give you from start to finish some of the things that might occur as a result of this therapy. But first of all, let's talk about what is radioactive iodine treatment. And basically, it, I'm just going to make this real simple because you probably have heard about it if you're, if you're watching this video. But radioactive iodine ablation therapy or radioactive iodine treatment is a medical therapy designed to destroy your thyroid gland. Now, typically it's done for patients who have hyperthyroidism, meaning their thyroid gland is producing too much thyroid hormone. So the idea is if we give you radioactive iodine, it will destroy only your thyroid gland, although that turns out to you know not be 100% true because other tissues concentrate it a little bit. But the idea is if we give you iodine, we can take advantage of the physiology in your body. Um, and what your body does when it gets iodine is it shoves it in and kind of crams it and isolates it into your thyroid gland. So if you take radioactive iodine and we and your body automatically, so if we put that in your body, your body will automatically concentrate it in the thyroid gland and then all that radioactive iodine will be concentrated in that one area and it will just damage everything that's around it without hopefully damaging the other parts of your body. And again, that's done with the sole intent to destroy your thyroid function. We're not going to talk about why you'd want to do that or if you have other options. We're strictly going to talk about what to expect as a result of this happening in your body. So number one, what should you expect? You're going to be radioactive for a few days. That might sound crazy, but it's true. Uh, it turns out if we put radioactive molecules inside of your body that there's a, a going to be some radioactivity emanating from you. Um, and essentially, this doesn't happen long. It lasts for only about five to seven days. And it's usually just precaution, precautionary because we just want to we want to prevent you from giving it or damaging other people. But what does that mean? It means you can't sleep next to people. It means you can't go to work. It means you can't prepare food for others. You can't go into public places. You can't sit on a toilet, fly in an airplane, ride a bus, show utensils, you know, things like that. Um, so you just want to stay away from other people. And that's just, this is especially true if you're around young children, um, anyone who is growing or around pregnant women. You want to be very, very careful around um, those two people. But yes, you're going to be radioactive. At, at the end of it, you'll be given this pamphlet that's, you know, includes a list of precautions. So I'm only going over some of this briefly, but just realize that that is the case. Number two, a really, really, really big deal is you may gain weight. Um, and may gain weight, if you want to put a number on it, there's about a 33 or 32% chance that you will gain weight, just based purely off of numbers. There are some things that influence this that make it more likely you're going to gain weight or less likely you're going to gain weight. But if we took 100 people and we gave them all RAI or radioactive iodine treatment, about 30 some odd percent would gain weight, which isn't a very promising thing. That's your odds, the chance of you gaining weight is quite high. And so what I'm, what I'm doing here is this is an image, and I pulled some data from the image just to talk about. Um, and so what this study found is they looked at 157 people before and after their procedure of RAI, which is radioactive iodine treatment. And then they looked and they said, how much weight did they gain, if any? And they found that using the CDC BMI classifications, um, overweight people, which I'm just going to show you here. So overweight based off of BMI, here's the BMI. Um, Here's that range, and here's the classification. So BMI, if you're if you're here, you're considered overweight. If you're 30 or higher, you're considered obese. And if you're 40 or higher, you're considered um, class 3 obese. So they used those proportions, and they found that of the people who were overweight in this category, so they had you know the BMI between 25 and 29, which a lot of people in America are, um, that the percent in the beginning was 9.6, and then after the procedure was 18.5, so a big increase, about double. And then the proportion of obese patients increased um, from 6.4 to 21, so almost quadruple there. So that means the obese. So if you were already overweight going into radioactive iodine therapy, there was almost a there was a huge percentage of people in this category that um, went from or that that became obese as a result of the uh, as a result of the therapy. Um, not only that, but they also found that about 30% of people, uh, roughly one third, moved from a lower category to a higher category. So what does that mean? It means that if you were in the overweight section, there's a high chance that you move to the obese section. If you were in the healthy weight, there's a high chance that you move to the overweight, or about a one third, and then obese to class three. So basically, there was movement, um, you know, up in weight but not down in weight as a result. And again, to the tune of about 30%. So we're talking not an insignificant amount, and this is really important, especially if you're already overweight. So just something to consider. It doesn't mean that you, you know, that you should necessarily not get the procedure done, but it does mean that you are absolutely going to want to. Uh, clean up your, your diet and your weight before you get the procedure because those who go into the procedure already having some weight um, are much more likely to gain even more weight afterwards.
Okay, so that's a topic for another video though. Number three, you will most likely need to be on thyroid medication. This one shouldn't come as a surprise. It, you need thyroid hormone uh, in order to, to survive. So if we destroy your thyroid gland, it turns out you're going to have to replace that lost thyroid hormone. And you do that by taking thyroid medication. Now, not every, um, not, not, not everyone will have to because sometimes the radioactive iodine doesn't destroy 100% of your thyroid gland. It might only destroy a third or a fourth or, or whatever, some, a small amount or half of it. And so your thyroid still has some function, but not a lot. But most people do need to be on medication afterwards. Number four, you may experience other thyroid symptoms. Okay, this is very, very, very important. So most people will blame the radioactive iodine treatment as the cause of their fatigue or as the cause of their hair loss or as the cause of their constipation. That's not entirely true. What happens is your body, the radioactive iodine destroys your thyroid, and then if you do not replace that thyroid medication that we just talked about correctly, that is going to cause these symptoms. So it may cause hypothyroidism, all right? And that's very, very important. It's an important distinction. So you may experience these symptoms, and I've, I've listed them here. Some of those symptoms may include weight gain. We already discussed that. Fatigue or low energy, hair loss, constipation, cold body temperature, eyebrow hair loss, brain fog, and depression. These are all symptoms of hypothyroidism meaning your thyroid medication is probably not um, correct for your body. But just realize that might happen. Number five, you should consider yourself hypothyroid after your procedure, especially if it was successful. Not all are successful like we talked about, but if you had a successful um, radioactive iodine ablation therapy, you should consider yourself hypothyroid afterwards. Now, this is really confusing because most, well, it's confusing for a lot of patients, let me put it that way, because most people who get this therapy they get radioactive iodine because of hyperthyroidism, okay? So I see this a lot, and so, so let me explain this too. So this is kind of what's happening. When I was working in the hospital, and I was in residency, I would have to admit patients. And so they would come in, and, um, you know, it's usually late at night for whatever reason, and I would go in and I'd ask them, like, you know, do you have any, are you on um, any medications? And they usually wouldn't remember. And then I would say something like, do you have high blood pressure? Or do you have high cholesterol? Do you have something? And they would respond, no, I do, not, I do not have high blood pressure, or no, I don't have high cholesterol. Then later I would find out that they're on blood pressure medication or cholesterol medication. So what they were thinking in their head was, well, if I had my high blood pressure and I took the medicine, I no longer have the condition. That's not entirely true. You still have the condition, you're still treating it. So what happens with your thyroid is that most people will think, well, if I treated my hyperthyroidism, or if I, I have hyperthyroidism and I needed RAI, so therefore I have hyperthyroidism. No, that's not true. You went underwent a permanent and irreversible process for the most part. We'll t we're not going to talk about the reversibility right now, but let's just assume for this this discussion, it's not reversible. So you have completely eliminated your thyroid or thyroid function. You are no longer hyperthyroid. You are now hypothyroid, meaning your body can't produce enough. So you have to consider yourself in this classification as hypothyroid. And this is important because all of the, the potential therapies, supplements, regimens, and protocols that are available to you if you have hypothyroidism are completely different if you have hyperthyroidism. Okay, so understand this point. It's very important. And I have a lot of, so if you look on my website, you'll notice a ton of my information is directed at people who are hypothyroid. And people will often ask me, they'll say, well, what about for me? I'm, I, I have hyperthyroidism and I, w and I had a radioactive iodine ablation and my response is you're not actually hyperthyroid anymore. You were. Now all of this information is relevant to you because your thyroid is not functioning. So understand that concept. It's a little confusing but I think if you read through it, especially on this blog post, I think it'll you'll understand it a little bit better. Last one, number six, men may have short-term short in infertility afterwards. So if you're a man getting this procedure, um, you know, because men do get this procedure, uh, just realize that for up to two years, uh, you may have reduced sperm counts um, as a result of this this procedure. So the good news is you can just bank up your sperm before you go, especially if you're in, you know, the, the years where you're trying to conceive or, or you want a child or whatever it is. So just be aware of this. It's not something that's, you know, final necessarily and uh, a reason not to get it. There are ways to get around it, but it is a potential thing that you should, you know, consider or at least put on your expectation list um, if you're a man. So I'm not going to talk about the restoration of thyroid function. Sometimes it can be restored and whatnot. I just want to talk about the expectations and to kind of help you guys understand what is going on there. So if you have any questions about radioactive iodine treatment, if you had it in the past, um, if you're just not sure, what, whatever it is, just leave your comment below. I'll do my best to get to those questions and try and clarify anything, any confusion that exists. Um, and otherwise, I'll see you guys in the next one.